Bienvenue euh, à l'épisode de cette semaine du bon spectacle Drame avec moi, Chris Goodram. Comme vous pouvez le voir sur la page de T, nous sommes en France cette semaine. Pas littéralement, c'est peut-être. Yes, sorry, no, I'm not going to carry on the rest of the episode in French. Um, I, I, apologies to uh, to Greg and uh, obviously anyone else from France who happens to be watching the episode as I uh, murder your mother tongue. But, um, well, these things have to be done in the, in the name of entertainment, don't they? Um, anyway, right. So, firstly, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that's watched uh, last week's episode of the show, commented, lots of comments on the music, seemed uh, that that went down really well, and a, a big thank you to Hands of Attrition for um, the, the comment they kindly left on uh, YouTube. Um, appreciate the, uh, the comment, and uh, obviously, as you can hear, I took up their offer of using uh, their other song, so uh, um, as... Everybody seemed to really get into uh, uh, last week's um, last week's song. Hopefully, this one will do the job as well. And um, yeah, it's it's always nice to offer some support to you know bands and things like that. I mean, it's pretty much the reason, well, not the reason I started the show, obviously, but the reason why I incorporated music into the show, a to make it slightly different to some of the other. Um, whiskey tasting shows that were out and about on YouTube when I started but also you know it's kind of nice to sort of you know um, hopefully play a, a small part in uh, in helping sort of like you know up-and-coming bands I mean certainly nowadays with the uh, the lack of uh, opportunities to play live and there are a number of bands that obviously you know that's how they make their living by by, by playing live so um anything that i can do to help is uh, is really cool so um so yeah big thank you to hands of attrition um anyway let's talk about this week's episode of the show um <laughs> right so obviously as you can tell we're looking at french whiskey and uh yeah again apologies for murdering the french mother tongue um so we're looking at the, the these were all samples i got for uh this year's uh world whiskey awards uh as i probably mentioned um the samples that i got sent were the world uh entries rather than any of the scottish ones and um i always like tasting world whiskies and th th there are some issues i have with european whiskies um you know french german etc and the biggest issue i have with them is they often seem to be bottled far too young um now a number of these distilleries are you know have have been going for quite a while in actual fact and you would have thought that by now they would have mature stocks but i'm guessing that they probably decided to go down a very similar route to um the penderan distillery in wales and they decided that they wanted to keep their flagship bottling for want of a better word um as similar to it was when they first released it which basically meant essentially sort of three to five year old spirit um and sometimes i it's just the maturity is just not there and i found that in so many french and german and 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 other european whiskies that you just think well why didn't you just leave it a little bit longer to just develop some character lose the spiritiness and the rough edges anyway um today's episode like i said is it features uh, a range of blended uh, malt whiskies uh, under the name of uh, bellavoy now um i'd like to tell you an awful lot about these guys but the reality is i don't really know an awful lot about them at all their their website is um should we say uh has lots of floweriness but not an awful lot of information and i i will quote um bellavoy bears the name of a road the least traveled by a path that one barely sees and that carries the promise of dawn a destination shaped like a dream. Jean and Alexandra uh, designed this dream, placing their faith at the very heart of it, faith in the strength of their culture and country, France. Oh, dear God. I mean, yeah, all right, it's probably lost some something in the translation, but, to, I mean, flowriness, ahoy, you know, I mean, you know, uh, marketing antennae going off, you know, I mean... 
I would just like to have known a bit more information about who these guys were, why they started it, uh, where they're getting their, their, their malts from. Um, I mean, I discovered that in actual fact, they were, the fact the company was founded in 2013, and they source malt from distilleries over France, um, uh, from apparently from the north, the east, the southwest, Alsace and Lorraine. So I did some digging and um, I'm, these are only my assumptions from where these uh, malts come from. The northern distillery could possibly be Bargram. Um, produced, started producing whiskey in 1998, I think one of the first, if not one of the first, uh, of the first uh, French dis whiskey distillery to sort of uh, release a product. In the east, I have no idea, there's at least three or four different distilleries to the east of France, so could have been from any of them. The southwest, uh, the distillery, it could possibly be Castan, who started production in 2010. The distillery in Alsace is possibly, now I'm just going to murder this uh, name, uh, Claisan de Vamorensis, uh, Vamorensis? Oh, mm, sorry, uh, which apparently is actually quite an old distillery, dates back to 1817, and they also produce uh, beer and Geneva, and I would guess that's probably what they originally started uh, doing before they moved into whiskey. And the distillery in in France, in the rain, uh, could possibly be France, uh, Francais uh, Roselieurs, uh, sorry, um, who started production in 2007. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't suppose it really matters uh, where the where the malt came from. It's all about obviously the quality of the juice in the bowl. But it's nice to have a little bit of information about where these malts are being sourced from. There's no indication of an age or anything like that. Obviously the bottles, as you can see from the picture, uh, don't carry an age statement. Um, so, so yeah, I, like I said, I would love to tell you more about who these guys are, what they've been doing, their backgrounds and all that sort of stuff, but frankly, I haven't got a clue. So uh, you're just gonna have to make do with my, uh, my assessment of uh, what they're sticking in the bottle. Okay, so the first one we're going to kick off with is called the Bellevoy Bleu. Uh, this is bottled at 40% and is an unpeated blend of whiskies from the northeast and southwest of France. And that's pretty much all I can tell you about that particular bottling. Uh, the second bottling we'll be looking at is the um, Bellevoy Blanc, uh, obviously meaning white, hence the white label. Um, this is an unblended, uh, unpeated blend of malt from the northeast and southwest of France, but this time it has been finished in ex Saturns casks, so could be interesting. Uh, the next one we were looking at is called the Bellevoy Prune. And now, admittedly, when I tasted these, obviously I had no information about what they were called or where they came from or anything like that. All I knew was that they were blended whiskies and their ABV, and that was it. Um, so it's always interesting to find out what they actually are. So, um, and I was thinking, good God, has it been finished in ex prune juice casks? Uh, but then I realised that prune is actually the French for plum because prunes are dried plums. I had to check that up actually um, just to make sure that I was I was correct. Anyway, so uh, I don't know the makeup of this particular bottling because it doesn't actually feature on their website. So maybe it's a limited edition or something like that, or maybe no, we're not going to go there. Um, anyway, so it's probably finished in ex plum liqueur casks. Uh, which obviously brings to mind uh, the, the rather amazing uh, old Hibiki 12 year old which is now uh, no longer available. Anyway, bottle of 43%. Uh, next bottle we'll be looking at is indeed the Bellevoy Rouge or Red. Uh, again, bottled at 43% and this is a lightly peated blend of malt whiskey from the North Alsace and Lorraine. Finished in ex saint Emilion Grand Cru wine casks. So, yeah, okay, uh, looking at the colour and um, yeah, it could be, uh, could be interesting. Uh, anyway, we shall, uh, no, uh, hmm. anyway, 
And on to the on to the final one, and uh, this week, ah, peated whiskey time. Thank God for that. Uh, so this is the Bellavoy Noir, uh, and this is a peated blend uh, from the North Alsace and Lorraine. So uh, so that's that's the lineup. Um, I think I actually better pour some in my glasses now. Um, yeah. Right, okay, so I was, uh, I've been, all morning I've been sort of working on my French pronunciation, which I hope wasn't too bad. Um, it's just completely forgot to put the whiskey in the glass. But anyway, now it's in the glass, I'm now going to taste it. So uh, we're going to kick off, like I said, with the uh, with the bleu. Let's uh, see what uh, the nose gives us on this. Young, oily quite a heavy malt. Um, it's got a sort of uh, an almost wheaty kind of, of character. Um, a sort of a dark wheat flakes. Um, there's a little bit of malt biscuit but that's about it really. I mean it is just very young. It's not mari, it's not spirity. Well there's a slight sort of spiritiness to it I suppose but there's not really a huge amount of character here whatsoever. I mean um, it's just it's it's not yeah it's not raw but it's young and it's it's it really hasn't I mean I'm not I'm not getting a huge amount of oak um, it just doesn't seem to have, um, have evolved and and this is just a classic example in in, in my experience of tasting European whiskies uh, of what they do they just bottle it far far too young um, I mean there's a there's a little bit of malt sweetness underneath it. I mean, it's 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 not terrible by any any stretch of the imagination. Um, anyway, let's let's see what that's like. Young, oily. Slightly fainty. There's that little bit of cardboardiness, um, certainly on the mid palate. A little bit of sweetness, a bit of bitter oak. N I'm not getting a great deal of vanilla. I'm not getting a, a great deal of American oak character. Um, it's a bit sure. It's a. It's not harsh, but it, it's a bit on the raw side, shall we say? And it again, it just doesn't feel like it has a great deal of evolution about it. Um, and like I said, you know, a number of these these distilleries have certainly been in production for quite a considerable amount of time, and you know, you would have thought that they would have been able to pick up spirit that had a little bit more uh, maturity to it, or maybe this is just the nature of French whiskey that it just takes a awful lot longer than say your average Scotch whiskey to to mature. I don't know. Um, like I said, not knowing. The age statement of the uh, the components is very difficult to tell, but to me, it certainly tasted uh, pretty young. Right, okay, so let's move on to the blur. So um, I'm guessing this is essentially uh, pretty much the same blend, except it's been finished in ex turns cask. So let's see what uh, the nose gives us. Well, the cask is quite noticeable. Uh, it's giving that sort of late harvested honeyed uh, character. Um, it seems to be more malty. It's masking a certain amount of the youthfulness in actual fact. Um, there's a little bit of baked apple, some pleasant herbal notes. Um, certainly, I think it is slightly more successful than the, than the previous bottling um, mainly because I think the Saturn's cask is kind of you know masking some of that immaturity um, and um, yeah the longer it seems to be in the glass the more of the Saturn's sweetness is coming through um, it's not unbalanced um, but like I said, it's it's certainly skewed more towards the uh, the finishing cask. Let's see what it passes like. It's 
it's a bit of almost dirtiness. I mean, it's not quite. It's a it's a sort of wood. It's a slightly sort of musty, woody kind of character. Um, I mean, I'm being very, very picky here because I think you probably wouldn't notice that. But to me, that stood out uh, on the uh, on the mid palette on the finish. Um, the cask is not so noticeable on the palette. It's more about the spirit. Again, it's very much like the previous bottling. Um, wheaty, um, a bit raw, oily, and um, again, a little on the short side. It, it doesn't really... It doesn't really, again, feel like it's got a great deal of age. It's, it doesn't quite feel all together. Um, and I'm guessing that there was probably, I mean, I don't know what the production of level of these bottlings are. They're obviously not single cask bottlings, but I'm guessing that maybe one of the, uh, one or maybe more of those Saturn's casks was possibly a little bit iffy, um, technical term there. And yeah, it has kind of just marred that a little bit, I think. So, but I think. So far, I think I would prefer this one to the uh, to the blue. Right, I'm from Prune Juice then. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Oh no. Um, toffee. Um, sweet, confected, plummy, malt, citrus. Again, there's that sort of slight wheatiness. Um, it, it has a kind of Mari strawberry mousse kind of character. Um, sort of an almost kind of Ogentoshian y sort of note there. Um, it's a bit peculiar, it has to be said. Um, and, um, oh, I'm not loving this one, I can tell you. Um, I mean, I, you know, like I said, I think the sort of like the benchmark for using sort of plum liqueur cast was the, the Hibiki. I mean, and yes, I know it was 12 years old and the spirit in here is probably half that age. Um, but that was just such a gorgeous um, whiskey. Um, this is just a little bit too confected. And um, anyway, let's see what the part's like. No, no, that's a bit of a bloody mess, it has to be said. I mean, that really is confected. Um, I mean, Mari, I mean, you know, yes, I, I like Mar. I like Mar. You know, I like the rawness and the intensity uh, that you get from Mar, but I don't really want that in my whiskey. I want evolution. I want, uh, yeah, there's a bit of malt there. There's a bit of confected sweetness. Uh, I can see why it's not actually on their website because really this is not very good at all. It has to be said, and I, I'm sorry about that, but it is quite nasty on the aftertaste. Right, okay, so um, I need a bit of peat to get rid of the flavour now with that one. Um, so this is uh, the 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 rouge or the red so this is the lightly peated uh, let's see what the nose gives on this then shall we um yeah that's really lightly peated it is so lightly peated i don't really get any peat at all um again it's 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 young it's oily it's quite wheaty i'm getting more of the wheatiness now i mean um yeah, it has that sort of, you know, dark wheat flake, bran flake kind of character, you know. It is quite unusual um, to find that in a, in, in a malt whiskey, but, you know, um, I think there's some barley there. I think there's a bit of oak, but, I mean, this really is young. I mean, this really has very, very little character apart from the, the wheatiness. Um See what pops up. Like. 
short, fainty, raw. I think that I'm getting some of the um, some of the wine cask. Um, certainly, there's a bit of tannin, maybe a little bit of red fruit on the finish, but it's just too young again. Um, there's no real length to it. There's no real depth. Um, it's okay. Um, certainly, with the exception of, of, of the prune um, or the plum. Um, that the quality of the spirit seems to be pretty good that's being used. It's just like I said, it just just doesn't have enough character and enough age um, to, to make it a really great whiskey, uh, in my, my personal opinion. Um, obviously, I'm slightly summing up before I should sum up, so uh, uh, I think we'll move on to, um, to the last part. Right, okay, so this is the uh, Noir, so this is peated malt. Let's see what nose goes. Ah, now, that is a lovely nose. Um, I'm actually getting a sense of maturity here. I'm getting a little bit of dusty oak. I'm getting orange, tangerine, some earthy peat. Um, I mean, this just stands out from all of these bottlings like a complete sore thumb. It's kind of, it has character, it has depth, there's no faintiness, there's no roughness. It's kind of, it's actually rather, rather good. Um, hey, yeah, alright, it's got a little bit of digestive biscuit, you know, it does, it's obviously not as, um, not as young as the the other bottlings and it, it seems to be showing some maturity but there's some youthfulness there but it's all it has a bit more character to it there's some fruit there's some esters there's so it's been allowed to sort of develop um and i think even without the sort of like the the peatiness of this particular uh bottling i think this this would have been a, a lovely blend and i think it is um and it just and this obviously shows that the two guys behind the business obviously know what they're doing um, when it comes to blending. It's anyway. We'll, we'll get on to that anyway. Let's uh, let's uh, see what the power side. It's a little younger on the palate, it has to be said. Maybe not quite as complex as a nose. Still some lovely peat. Um, touch of apple. Uh, maybe some pear. Barley. It's got a nice sort of heathery kind of peat uh, character to it. It's got a length. It's got a finish. It's, it's a lot more complete and it's a lot more together. Um, and it's a bit of grippiness to it, a little bit of tannin, it feels, a, although it feels younger on the palate, it certainly overall seems to feel like it has an element of maturity to it, um, and you know what, that is very, very good, and it, like I said, it kind of stands out from the, from the range, um, quite, quite considerably, but that I thought was, was pretty damn good. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show up. Um, overall, I mean, you know, it, I think it's it's obvious from the range that um, the Jean and Alexandra are, are sourcing quality spirit. I think it just basically needs a bit more maturity. I don't know what these are retailing for. I did, well, was going to actually look them up and see if they were available in the UK. I, I imagine you know who has probably got them. Um, and I guess you kind of like have to weigh up the sort of like, you know, how much uh, are you going to have to pay for these to whether you think they're good value for money or not. And as I don't know that, I can't comment on that. But what I can comment on is the, the juice. And to be honest with you, um, the blue was just, just too young. No real character. Um, it, you know, it just just needed more time. Um, the white, yeah, okay. Um, same blend as the blue. Saturn's cask certainly masking some of the the, the youthful oiliness and and 
uh, and rawness on the nose but on the palate it certainly didn't do that it, it was kind of subservient to the sort of like the, the spirity character the prune plum call it whatever you like oh, no no please no no more of that I really really was not a great whiskey at all you know interesting idea uh, nice concept but um I would suggest not doing that one again. Um, the, uh, the red, well, um, again, it's just a lack of time. You know, I didn't really get a great deal of peat. I really didn't get a great deal of, of wine cask either. It was just, again, unevolved, and it, that just all comes down to time. Uh, either by more mature stocks or just you know blend it and sit on it for a little while longer you know it's it, it, I, I understand that you know when you have a, a company and you're 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 putting together a, a whiskey you want to get it out there and on the market but at the end of the day you know you 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 kind of like have to sort of like take the long view you have to like i said you either have to say right okay we're going to buy young spirit we're going to blend it we're going to then bat it we're then going to put it back into cask and leave it or you buy more mature spirit yes okay by buying more mature spirit the price the costs go up etc etc but you know it's um at the end of the day it's like you know what do you want to achieve are you just doing this purely for the money or are you doing this purely for the love of, of blending whiskey you know and i think that basically the last bottling that the noir shows that that these guys obviously know what they're doing they they obviously can blend whiskey together um and if they really started using more mature spirits um i think yeah, the, if if that is 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 what they can do, then really the rest of the range should be on the same kind of level. And I'm yeah, maybe that sort of that 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 will happen. Uh, I honestly don't know. Um, but I think at the moment it's interesting. It's an interesting concept. Um, I don't know if there are many other um, wholly blended um, French whiskies out there on the market. I imagine they may well be. Um, but you know and. And I, yeah, I, I hopefully, you know, I, I like to think I've not been a, a unduly hard and critical, but at the end of the day, that's that's my job. Um, you may well agree or disagree with me again. That's, you know, one of the wonderful things with regards to uh, the, the whole the whole whiskey thing, you know, so certain whiskies appeal to certain people and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um I hope you're uh, surviving well uh, as we get, what are we are week four of the lockdown in the UK? I, I mean, obviously certain other countries have, have been in lockdown for a bit longer. Hopefully you're not going too stir crazy uh, and drunk all of your whiskey. But anyway, um, until next week, um, all I have to say is good running and good afternoon.